Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. So thank you. I'm honored to be here. My question is, what if the only limits are the limits of our imagination? And I decided to go with this question because I thought that, um, based on my experience, my personal experiences in living in different parts of the world, I found that the most dangerous limits are not really of our resources, but they're really about the questions that don't occur to us to ask. And I think that this is dangerous because we are kind of limited and we, do not, and we don't even realize that. And so you might ask, like, what does this kind of maybe philosophical sounding question have to do with entrepreneurship? And I think that even before we start talking about ideas and innovation, we need to also think about what kind of imagination is shaping that, um, our ideas and what is placing the limits on, those, on the questions that we ask. And so... Um, and so there are different ways I want to ask this, this question. One is, it, is, is it possible that entrepreneurship may not just be about creating possibility, but about creating possibility for everyone? Is it possible that entrepreneurship is not just about progress, but about equity? Can entrepreneurship be inclusive of the marginalized and the vulnerable? And what if the entrepreneurial imagination is not yet big enough? And so it's, um, I guess, it's a question. I don't have the answer, but hopefully when we talk, we'll, we'll talk more about that. And so, um, and what brought me all the way to Vegas to ask this question is that someone talked about how 50% of the world is living in cities, so I'm going to talk more about that as well. And so what we're finding is that, on the one hand, we're having economic progress and we're having wonderful ideas, we're having innovation, and on the other hand, all these cool ideas, all this economic progress is coexisting with the worst possible outcomes. And um, the WHO calls these hidden cities, which is that in most of our most of our cities in the world, even like the richest cities in the world, we have pockets of people that are hidden. They're kind of invisible. Legally, they're not really counted. Um, so I kind of like to think of them as like the alter egos of our society. And they're, they're legally, financially, property-wise, they're excluded. And they're even physically excluded because most times we don't really have to see these groups of people. And they're called uh, the, hidden, kind of the hidden cities in our, in our cities. And so my big question is that, is this, is this the world we want? Like, is it enough for us to just have innovation and entrepreneurship, but at the same time coexisting side by side with the worst outcomes? And I don't think, I don't think that anybody's going to say yes here. And so because of that, I think that if that is not enough, then we need to look at systems and not just innovation on the individual level, but we need to start asking that what kind of systems are creating the outcomes that we're seeing in the world. And so I'm saying that cool innovations and cool ideas are not enough. And yes, we've moved from co um, commodities to gifts, we moved to the sharing economy, we've moved to thinking about design and the consumer, and we've, we have technological innovations that are faster and they're seamless and all that, and this is really great, but I think that it's still not enough. And I'm going to give you an example from my own work. So I do a lot of work thinking about chronic disease prevention. And we have all these cool apps and gadgets and devices for... Um, I'm sure you guys know about all the cool devices that we have for chronic disease prevention. And they improve quality and they improve customer satisfaction, but they have not been able to improve overall health outcomes, really reduce chronic disease outcomes, even in North America. And this is because they are not integrated into the health system. So they are still provided on a commercial level for people that can afford them, and so they are not very accessible to people, so they are not equitable. And so that's why I say that the imagination that is shaping entrepreneurship is very crucial. And that how about we change the system and not just think of how we can cheat it or how we can make it cuter or smarter or faster, but how can we start thinking about how we can scale up our innovations to a systems level? And I think this is a much harder question to ask, and that's why I'm here today. today. Um, and so I have a few hypotheses. I don't have the answer, but I have some hypotheses. My first hypothesis is that before we talk about disruptive innovation, we need to ask disruptive questions. And I define a disruptive, I imagine a disruptive question like this, like you're going your way and then someone comes and asks you a question and it totally changes the way that you look at the world. And I think that the only way I have found in my own life that I've been able to ask disruptive questions is by actually inviting people that are very different from me into conversation. So I think that for us to be able to ask disruptive questions, we need to be with people that are not like us. And um, I think we have that opportunity today in our globalized world because you can meet people from different parts of the world. And that's why I'm actually here today because someone, ret um, someone retweeted Matt's comment and then I followed him and I told him that I liked what he was doing and now I'm here today. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> okay, um, let me see how much time do I have. Okay, I still have some time. Um, my, my second hypothesis is that we need to listen deeper to our systems. 
and that when we see individual issues, we need to ask ourselves, what is this telling me about society? What is this telling me about the system that, that I'm in? So for example, if we're seeing the whole issue of like gun violence in the States and young boys um, and gun violence, maybe we can start asking, maybe it's not just about this individual, but what is this telling me about American society? Is there something it's telling me about adolescents, for example? What needs to be fixed on, a, fixed on a systematic level? And if we're seeing things like loneliness and depression and anxiety, which is a big issue as well, especially in developed countries, we can ask ourselves, what is this telling me, not just about the person, but what is it telling me about society? And I think this shapes the kind of innovations we come, come up with if we start asking these kind of questions. And who am I not seeing in my daily life? Who is on the cracks and who is on the edges? And why are they, they there? And what kind of system is creating these kind of outcomes? And how can it be fixed? I think that's a much harder question, and I think it's the question that we need to ask as entrepreneurs. And then the, the third thing I wanted to say was, we shouldn't be afraid to confront like an artist. And so I'm, I'm calling for all of us to kind of be like artist entrepreneurs and basically asking questions that you are afraid to ask and asking questions that you're afraid do not have answers and being willing to, willing to sit with difficulty and contradiction and being willing to be confused because the kind of questions we were asking don't have simple answers and, and, and be, being willing to move toward difference and not just comfort as well. And so let me end by this. I like to joke that I don't like positive thinking. Obviously, I'm a happy person, but it's, I don't mean it literally. But what I mean is that we, sh we shouldn't um, feel like we have to think positive all the time at the expense of confronting or at the expense of asking the difficult and necessary questions that we need to ask. And some people say, if you can't do anything, focus on what you can do. And I think that even if you can't do anything, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be human and see. And, and one of my favorite quotes actually is um, criticized by creating, but now I like to qualify it by saying criticized by creating, but first by confronting. And so I think ultimately my question is trying to get us to say, can we really expand the entrepreneurial imagination to think bigger and think how can we change systems and not just, not just, create, new, not just create new things, but how can we actually create new systems, basically? And so that's, um, that's my question. And I look forward to hearing what everyone has to say. Thank you.